you can pull down negative thinking with the word of god you can pull down negative thinking with the word of god you can pull down negative thinking with the word of god Praise the Lord. Okay. Before we write further notes, we will study a little more what I left in the morning. Did you understand? Yes. The battle is in the mind. And when you allow the thoughts, and when you keep on thinking, now these thoughts become strongholds. Now you don't have control over your life, but these strongholds. Uh, they are ruling your life. We will learn it. Romans chapter twelve. Let's go to verse two. Chapter twelve, verse two. Give me 
because they don't worry. We lack not because the, because God is not providing all there is nothing in this world. We lack because of our own worry. That's why the Bible says, "Do not worry. If you worry, then you are blocking me to bless you. If you worry, you are opening the doors for the devil. If you worry, you have." Oh, yeah. 
Praise the Lord. You know, when I, when I read this, I always remember this example. My sister said, a caterpillar. You have seen a caterpillar? How does this caterpillar becomes into a butterfly? Are they both the same? They are entirely different. The structure is different. Yes? Then enter it. This one is flying. But this one doesn't fly. A, 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 a butterfly is extremely beautiful in different colors. But if the caterpillar uh, looks beautiful? But how can this caterpillar, which is ugly, which is very different, it is transformed completely. You know, God doesn't want us to live the same person how you were living earlier. He wants you to live a transformed life. He wants us to be transformed. Not only inside, inside and outside. But if inside does not change, then outside will not change. If you see a caterpillar, it keeps on eating the leaves day and night. The leaves are its food. In the same way, a person who takes the word of God and keeps on eating, like how when a negative thing happens, I said in the morning, the cow, it, takes, it, it eats the grass and it keeps chewing, like that, when you take the word of God, and now when you keep on eating the word of God, like how the caterpillar eats the leaf, in the beginning, when the caterpillar is eating the leaf from outside, nothing is changed. It looks the same. In the same way, when you are taking the word of God and you are studying the word of God, you are speaking the word of God, writing the word of God, you might look like the same person. In the beginning, when I was taking, I, my life was a failure. I was, I, I was a zero in everything. I was sent out from the school. They said this girl can't read and write. But when I took the word of God and when I started to study the word of God and speak the word of God, I looked the same person. I did not change immediately. I was the same weak person. I had the same sickness. But yet, I did not stop eating the leaves. In the same way, in the beginning, when you start, like how the caterpillar eats the leaves, day and night, in the same way, when you take this word of God and when you start to speak the word, in the beginning, you won't see any change externally. You may think that, am I a fool? Why should I confess this? Because your problem is speaking something different and the scripture is speaking something different. You are saying I lost my job, I don't have money and you are saying my God supplies all my needs. How can I say something like that when I don't see anything happening in the physical? You may feel that you are a fool when you are speaking something. That's what morning we saw. We don't look at things which we see but we look at things that cannot be seen. When you are speaking the unseen, you may look like a fool. I was sharing about my sister. When she was speaking this, and the family members came and said, I think she has gone mad because she is going to lose her baby. Because she has lost, she has gone out of her mind. Because for them, they see something, but when they see her, she is speaking something. But when she was speaking, nothing was happening. In the physical, everything was the same. Are you going to wait until everything changes and going to speak? Sorry. The Bible says to speak the unseen. It doesn't happen automatically. It is like, you know, in the morning I said, a soldier has to go and train. And the training is tough. The soldier has to go and go at the, you know, is it, is it easy for a, for a person in the army? In the beginning they want to run away. So you go and ask any army man. The training is not tough, but the, he says, I want to run away, I can't sit here. I can't, it's torturous. If they fall, they, they make them stand 
do if you want to change your life. You know, she used to, my sister used to say, you know, everybody was coming and telling me, the doctors were thinking, no, she, she, has, she is a professor, she, she is a lecturer, she teaches for the students, she teaches for the nursing students, she teaches for the master students, she teaches the microbiology, she speaks about the microorganism, she is a professor in that field. And, 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 the, and, the, and the sickness is because of a microorganism that attacked the baby and she knew the name. She knew what is the effect, she knew what is the outcome, she knows everything. And the doctors, they don't know. And they come and ask, tell her, you don't understand. The doctors thought that she doesn't have, she didn't understand the severity of the problem. But she said, no, I know, I understood. But I, can, I see the unseen. It's not easy, but you have to fight. The fight is to bring every thought into captivity. Until the thought obeys you, you open your mouth and you speak. When I was saying, I feel by the words of Jesus, my, the people in my house, the same sister would say, you can't to see, you are sick, and you are saying, you are saying, I am healed. And when I used to find it difficult to write and read, I would say, I have the mind of Christ. The spirit of wisdom is found within me, the knowledge of God is within me. The spirit of truth abides in me and teaches me all things. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of mind, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of fear of the Lord is upon me. I would keep saying that. The more the thoughts would come that are weak, the more the thoughts would come I can't read, the more the thoughts would come I can't understand, I can't grasp. The more I open my mouth and say, what I say and what is happening is the opposite. Because now I know that training is tough. It's not easy because it's my natural old uh, the old the, the old person the fallen person the, the natural tendency is to speak what I see to believe what I see because the five senses is not uh, real to me how can I believe something which I can't see what I'm facing now at present is real to me because I can feel the pain because it is really pain it is so real for me. But the scripture is only in the Bible, it's not real. Yes or no? Yes. That's what was happening for me. What I was going through at that time, that physical pain, that problem was real. Whereas the scripture is only in the Bible that is written. So it is so challenging for me. Now, even though I can feel it physically, I have to fight it spiritually. That is the whole Christian life. The battle is completely in the mind. Are you going to win or are you going to lose? It depends on are you going to go by what you see and feel or by what is written in the word. That's the challenge and that's the battle. That's why the scripture says, do not be conformed to this world, but be you transform and the transformation will take place only by renewing of your by changing the way you think praise the lord, praise the lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah okay come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 
was telling me, I want to repeat it again, that the thoughts are like plants. Yeah, the two plants, two tree, one is fully green and other is full of thoughts. When you get this thoughts, when the thoughts are aligned with the word of God, then the brain is healthy. Okay. Suppose there are two students. Okay. And uh, one student is studying every day. For example, example, mathematics. I will talk to them. Children. Okay. One student is studying every day, taking the sum, writing and exercising it every day. One student doesn't study every day, waits until, until the exams come. When the exam come, last minute, the student would Sister, pray, no. 
I am a message. Did God speak anything? Did God reveal this? God gives you messages, sister. We, we always tell our children, study, study, study. Don't study at the last moment. You have to write. Do you see? Don't just read. When it comes to children, don't just read. Because I don't know, you understood that stronghold. If you read, it won't be a stronghold. Only if you study, you write, you read and practice every day, then only it becomes stronghold. Only when it becomes a stronghold, you will remember. That you understood. But why not? The, the 
the, the chili. Yeah? Actually, see, the limbo has nothing and the chili has nothing. But the moment when you see the stronghold that you have built, now you have allowed the spirit in your life because of the fear, believing that this is going to cause something in my family. Now, you really allow the demon to attack you. Not because of the limbo and that uh, mitchi, because of your thinking. The big weapon that the devil uses is deception. 
No? Is it very heavy? Are you thinking? Wondering? Or you have gone somewhere? Everybody here? Thoughts are not just if you going, if you are going to allow that single thought in your life in that area, that means you have opened door for the enemy in that area. That means you have become a slave to the enemy. That's why when a person is depressed, it's not just a physical problem. It's no when when you have a half a stronghold, it is not just a physical stronghold. It is spiritual. It is demonic. You have allowed the devil to have control over your life in that area. Romans 
um, chapter uh, 6, verse 16.
as physical things. That's why what thoughts are you allowing? What, what words are you allowing? Those spiritual things you have allowed in your life. If you see the airport, yeah, there's so many flights. Yes. Uh, the, the, the flight will not land if the traffic controller has not given the signal. Sometimes you see they don't land. The, the time has come but they keep on, keep on going round and round and round and they don't land because they are just waiting for the traffic controller to give them the signal. In the same way, there's so many negative thoughts, they are not thoughts, they are actually not just thoughts, they are demonic, they are spiritual, they are things, they are things that cannot be seen, they are real. Because you can't see doesn't mean it is not there. Can you see the mobile signal? No, does, does it mean it is not there? They are radio signals, you can't see, does it mean it is not there? In the same way, there are spiritual things that cannot be seen. And those things are words. And these, these thoughts are not just thoughts, they are either the demonic or it has God's power. And these, these thoughts, they come, they, you know, uh, we, we hear in the newspaper, we see the news, we see so many things. But the moment you give signal, like how the traffic controller gives signal, the moment you give signal, the moment you allow those thoughts, the moment you believe those thoughts, like how Adam believed those thoughts, the moment he allowed, now he allowed the demon, now you allow that demon to come and land in you, in you and have control in your life. Which spirit are you going to allow? The Holy Spirit? Or the evil spirits? Really? It all depends on how many thoughts have you allowed without captivating. If you have allowed, it, you know, you have to captivate every thought. Even if that word thought is against the word of God, you have allowed that evil spirit in that area. There are so many areas we have changed, but there are some areas we have not changed because in that area we have not captivated and not that thought into obedience to Christ. You know, I work with, uh, I have time to spend with the alcoholics and drug addicts. Recently when I was in uh, Sri Lanka, I had a chance to go to two of the rehabilitation center. And I thank God that in these places, they help these people to come out through the word of God. You can't make that person to come out from that addiction just by a medicine. Once the medicine is done, they go back, they go back to the old life. Because the problem is not the physical problem, the problem is in the mind, the stronghold. And what we do is, we give them the scripture and we make them to speak the scripture day and night. I was so happy to see that place, you know, in one place there were 250 alcoholic and drug addicts. And the person who is actually training them and teaching them once upon a time he himself was a drug dealer and he was in drugs heavy drugs but today he is the chairman of that uh, that organization it's so it's so joyful to see that a man has come out from that you know why because he knew that this word of god is powerful it's a divine weapon that god has given any stronghold whatever country you are can be destroyed. But without destroying that stronghold, you cannot change a person. A person
in this world, we, we see that person, is that, see, you can't force anybody. Even at that time, that person has to choice. If he wants to change, now we can, see, God, it, it did God come and force anybody? Did he come and force you? Or he gave you freedom of choice? Yes. And who are you to go and force anybody? You are not supposed to go and tell anybody, go and change your thinking, change your words. I did that mistake in the beginning in my life. I thought I had to go and change everybody around. I should tell them don't talk this, don't talk life, don't talk, don't talk that, speak life. Don't speak, don't watch this, don't see the movie, don't see that, this. Who are you to go and tell? Your responsibility and my responsibility is only to show love. And give them the truth. It is their choice whether to accept it or not. You pray for that person, but don't force anybody. There might be hundreds and hundreds of alcoholic and drug addict, but not everybody take it the same way. The gospel is given, but the one who takes, the one who takes the gospel, that word of God, and who, who's going to train, who's going to speak day and night, who's going to spend time to labor like a soldier, that person is not going to be the same. I went to two centers. Both the centers I saw, the person who's managing the whole show is a person who was already in that pit.